Madam President, the um, White House and the Department of Homeland Security released a press release yesterday to talk about what's happening on the border currently, especially on our southwest land border. I wanted to read just one line from the press release that was put out by Homeland Security yesterday, where they state in their press release, the administration's plan is working as intended. The administration's plan is working as intended. Now, what they were referencing was what's happening on the southwest border and the number of people that are crossing our border that are, quote, unquote, being encountered at the border. That's the new term from Homeland Security and the number of people that cross our border illegally. They're encountered. In the past, those individuals, and what I mean in the past, I mean in the past two years, those individuals crossed our southern border, asked for asylum because they were told by the cartels what to say. The cartels would say to each individual as they cross and pay the fee to the cartel, tell them you're afraid in your country. They would cross the border. They would say the words, I'm afraid in my country. They would be given an asylum hearing date in the future. That date is anywhere, depending on where they go in the country, between three years and seven years in the future. And they're told they can go anywhere in the United States they want to travel during that time period. Now, that's what it used to be. The administration came forward and said, we have a whole new plan. Our new plan post Title 42, that is the end of the pandemic restrictions, our new plan is that we're going to tell people there's a rebuttable presumption that you don't qualify, so don't come. So here's what's happened. Now you cross the border, and there's two ways you can cross the border. Now, this is the new plan. You can either fill out the paperwork before you come, or when you cross, we'll fill out the paperwork for you. If we fill out the paperwork for you, it will take longer for you to come into the country and cross the border, or you can fill out the paperwork before. What is that called? It's called CBP-1. It's an app that now you can download from anywhere in the world. Fill out your paperwork ahead of time, and when you cross, they'll quickly expedite you into the country for your asylum hearing anywhere between three and seven years in the future. Or if you cross between ports of entry, then it's gonna take you probably another eight hours or so for them to get all the paperwork filled out for you, and then you'll still be released into the country and have a hearing three to seven years in the future. What does the administration mean when they said the administration's plan is working as intended? They've now split up the numbers, and they've announced, look, our numbers are less than 4,000 people now that are crossing the border illegally. It was just 10,000 people two weeks ago. Of course, they did what they didn't say was the week before that, it was right at 5,000. But what they're not saying is they've actually taken, if you fill out on the app ahead of time, they don't count those numbers anymore. Here's what's happening. We have the same number of people illegally crossing our border this week than we had three weeks ago. Then we had three weeks before that. The administration now has just split up the numbers, how they're counted. If you fill out the app in advance or you f we fill it out for you when you cross the border, those are now two set separate sets of border, but they're still the same exact people that are crossing into the country. Except when I was at the border just two weeks ago and asked how all of this is working, I asked a very simple question. What are you noticing that's different now than what's different before? The response from CBP was, well, it's the same, you know, people are still moving in. They, they're allowed to be able to come into the country between ports of entry or at ports of entry. That's the same. But what's changed is a dramatic increase in the number of non-Spanish speakers that are coming. And the first words I had from several different individuals that I spoke with, both from non-governmental organizations and from our federal law enforcement when I was there last, was we are worried for our national security. In fact, federal law enforcement used the exact term, we have military age, single adult men coming into our country from non-Spanish speaking nations in the Middle East, in West Africa, from Russia and from China now, in much higher numbers than we had before. 
Just to set the context of what's happening now while the administration is saying the plan is working as intended, here's what's happened. In the first two weeks of the end of Title 42, we've had a thousand men from Mauritania, West Africa, come across our border. A thousand. Exactly none of them we have criminal background information on. None of them. So far this year, let me just compare two years ago to this year. So far this year, and this year's not over. If I look at Mauritania, we had 90 people two years ago from Mauritania. So far this year, 4,300. So far this year, and by the way, that doesn't include the main number that I was just saying that's 1,000 more. So we're well in excess of 5,000 this year so far from Mauritania. From Iran, it's gone from 62 to almost 300. If I want to say from Syria, where we have no background information on any of the folks coming in from Syria, we've had right at 200 people come in from Syria so far this year. From Pakistan, we've had over 500. From Somalia, we've had over 1,600. From China, we've had right at 10,000 people this year. If I go back two years ago from China, it was 450. Yeah, there's a huge shift that's actually occurring of Middle Eastern men, North African men, men from Russia and from China that are accelerating across our southern border because right now, apparently, the administration's plan is working as intended and we have thousands of people that are still crossing our border. I've heard even some recent reporting in the news on this that the numbers are way down. Numbers are way down. But apparently the press doesn't take the time to be able to look and see that the numbers have actually been split out into two different categories. The numbers are not down. In fact, the numbers right now would average somewhere around 450,000 a month right now. The highest, the highest month during the peak of the immigration surge under the Obama administration the highest month that happened during that time period when there was chaos and cameras that were focused on the southwest border, the highest month was 69,000. The administration is now saying our plan is working when there's 150,000 a month coming across the border. It's not working. It's fudging the numbers. It's trying to tell the American people, look away. It's trying to say we're doing a whole new set of enforcement on the border when really what's happening is people are being released into the country the same as they've always been released in the country for the last two years. The difference is they're told, hey, if you show up for your hearing three years from now, we may be more strict to you. But at the border, they're moving through just the same, being waved through. Now I bring this up to this body to ask a simple question. Have we learned nothing from 9-11? Thousands of Americans died because a group of individuals overstayed their visas here in the United States. No one went to check on them. No one went to track on it and just ignored the realities of what could be there. We have a huge national security risk. And God forbid we have a huge terrorist attack again, just because we want to tell everyone the plan is working as intended, look away, the numbers are down, when we literally have people coming in from all over the world that may be coming to work here, or may be coming in for nefarious reasons, we don't know. We literally don't know if these folks are fleeing poverty or fleeing justice, because we have no criminal history on these individuals coming in from around the world, none. In fact, as frightening as it may seem, right now the current policy happening at the Southwest border is if someone shows up without any identification, or with a photocopy of an ID that they say is theirs, it's being accepted as real. 
They can literally come in and say, I'm from Mauritania or Somalia or Syria or Iran or China or Russia, and this is my name, and they have no ID. We're writing down, creating for them a new ID card that's an American ID card and handing them a new identity and saying, show up at your hearing three years from now in the future. Travel anywhere you want in the country. You can use this card to fly or to travel or to show his ID when we literally have no idea if that's what their name is or that's the country they're from. That is the plan that is working as intended right now on our southwest border. I think it's a huge national security vulnerability. We need to talk about asylum. We need to talk about how we're going to define the national security risk for the United States. This body needs to have a real conversation about what legal immigration looks like and what we're going to say to the world about illegal immigration. If any of these individuals were to travel into Canada right now, the Canadians already have a clear law dealing with asylum. These folks would not be accepted into, into Canada because it would violate their basic asylum rules and how they handle it. But they're being literally waved into our country with no ID, with no criminal background check, and released into the country under the promise that they'll show up at a hearing three to seven years in the future. Can somebody explain to me why that's logical? If these same folks moved into Germany and said they want to claim asylum, Germany would put them in what they call a humanitarian center where they would stay. They wouldn't be released into Germany. Germany would never do that. They would stay in that one humanitarian area while they were processed through their asylum claim. And if they didn't qualify for asylum, they would be sent back to their original country. And that's usually with about two to three months. We are instead handing them a brand new ID, which we have no idea is their real name, releasing them into the country and saying, we hope you show up three to seven years from now at your hearing. Can somebody tell me that's wise? I'm not asking for something crazy or for something, quite frankly, the rest of the world doesn't already do. But for some reason, this body has locked up to talk about what everyone sees as obvious. And we refuse to even debate the issues of asylum and national security. This is not caustic and hard. This is reasonable where most Americans are. But we're not even talking about it on the floor right now. But we should. Because it matters. Our national security of our country is counting on us having adult conversations about the direction of the country. And I'd encourage us to get started on those sooner rather than later for the sake of our future as a nation. With that, I yield the floor.